Hey, this is a five minute data dump quickie. So I'll show you how I go about shoehorning features that are pretty big into a pretty small space. How to walk it down and then walk it back up again and see if we can find the best setup possible for the amount of space that we have. Let's do it. So I picked Ye old Sanguine Lulu because there is a profile for it in Marlin. It's already slimmed down pretty good. Now, if you don't know what this is, it's a board that based off the Sanguino board, which is a breakout board for the uh, Atmega 1284P processor. And I'm not gonna go into pin assignments and things like that because I know the, the Sanguino is, has a lack of pins. This also applies to anything that uses the uh, the 1284P processor, like the Melzi boards uh, that are used in like the some of the Creality, like CR tens and enders some of the skinnier ones and things like that which has specs that look like this and flash that looks like this which is not very big in comparison to what we're trying to fit on there in our platform io.ini file where we put all our settings make sure your env default fits whatever build envelope is for your particular board in our case it's the sanguino it could be the melzi or the melzi optiboot then you're going to take the sample configurations and just drag them right into the main marlin folder and then try to go ahead and build it now we see right here that we've used uh 60,940 bytes so this chip has 128K minus the bootloader, which is a few K, so like 127, minus our 61-ish, and that means we have 66K of progmem to play around with, which is not too much. And we're going to try to fit auto-leveling into it. The fancy schmanciest leveling is UBL, and from that we can see that we're going to require some kind of LCD with a rotary encoder. And spoiler alert, UBL plus graphical LCD is not going to fit on this machine. We already know that, that's why I'm making this video. And we're gonna start with the fanciest leveling option and then walk it down. So we might as well start with the fanciest display and then walk it down. So here's just our regular full graphic smart controller with encoder, SD card, and all that stuff. So let's enable our smart controller in Marlin, enable SD support as well and see if we can fit that and then go ahead and define auto bed leveling UBL. And then we need to define some kind of leveling probe. So let's do the fanciest one, the BL touch and see how it works. So after enabling all those features, I'm gonna go ahead and kick compile and see what happens. Of course it doesn't build. Apparently it has something to do with restore bed leveling after G26, which wasn't on the instruction guide on the website, but we'll go ahead and add that and see what happens. As expected, it doesn't fit. Looks like we are 47,694 over. So let's look at the options that we can slim down. The LCD itself, we have several different types. We have different levels of menus that we can use. And as far as auto leveling, there are several different types of auto leveling methods as well as different types of Z probes. And then SD card support, which we can ditch if we're using Octoprint, but it's nice to have around. Breaking those down further, for LCD style, we have full graphics and character. Now the full graphics takes up more than the character does. And then menus, we have full menus and then slim menus, which does away with some of the things like, you know, jerk settings, being able to set that on the fly from your LCD and that type of stuff. For auto leveling, we have several different types of Z probes. None, which is manual assist auto leveling. Second is fix, like an inductive probe. And then you get to fold out probes like the BL touch, which take up the most amount of memory. And then there's just a metric ton of options when it comes to what type of leveling. And I listed these from the least amount of memory to the most amount of memory start from the least necessary features we'll do slim menus first and we're still over but not by as much so we saved about 8k there next let's see what happens if we uh, use a regular character display instead of a full graphics display and see how that fits and after building it we say nope it doesn't fit at all next on the chopping block is sd support so let's see how much room that buys us going ahead and compiling it looks like we're down to only 2200 bytes over now bear in mind we might not be doing away with these features permanently we're just walking down what we may not need to see if it works and then if not we'll drop down to a lighter weight method of leveling or a lighter weight probe and then we'll walk the features back up from there Let's go ahead and try disabling M503 just because I thought of it. That's one of those things that's classically done if you're running out of space and desperately trying to find something to cut. And it's still not enough. So let's go further. I suspect that the BL Touch might be pulling in some libraries or bloating things up a little bit. So let's ditch that and see what happens if we go ahead with a fixed probe. Not quite, but we're getting very close. Now, other than switching to manual leveling and getting rid of the LCD display, there's not too much more we can do to cut, so it looks like UBL leveling is bye-bye. So we'll go down to the next one, which is mesh leveling, and see how that does. And we've gotten a new error. Oh joy, what is this? So... 
I have no patience for this stupid crap right now, so rather than fix this bug, I am going to go ahead and just comment out this entire function. How about that? And I'll just go back later and make sure it's not something I did. So let's see what happens if we go ahead and build success. Now, unfortunately, I don't know if it succeeded because I mangled the code or if it actually succeeded, succeeded. So what I'm going to do is check it out and see if it's actually an error and then maybe report it tomorrow and they will all roll their eyes because they're tired of hearing from me. But building with mesh validation turned off works as well. Well, it looks like mesh and an inductive probe will work. So now we just have to walk back our other features and see what else we can fit on there. First, we'll try SD card, and that succeeded. Then we can go ahead and try to turn our full menus back on, see if that'll fit, and that worked as well. Now we have enough space that I think we can turn our graphical LCD back on. So let's go ahead and do that and see if it'll fit. And that's a big fat yes. So it looks like the fanciest setup we can do is full graphics with SD support, full menus, mesh leveling, a fixed inductive probe, and a little bit of hacking to fix G26, which I'll have to find out if it's a bug or not. Now that's for a Sanguine Alolu, for like a Melzi base board, like for the uh, one of the, some of the Creality boards or some of the early i3 clones. Those have more things going on in the background, so it's likely this setup won't fit. Now the things that you might want to look about cutting that are very simple are ditch to full menus and go with slim menus, in which case you just won't be able to control the acceleration and jerk and those types of things from your LCD. Now if you still need a bit more room, you could look at SD support, disabling that in case you don't use it like you're an Octoprint person. And then of course there's always the possibility of switching from full graphics to a character-based display, which will save you a few K. You can always switch to something like linear or bilinear mesh leveling if you want to do that, but the full mesh plus fix probe looks like it's the, uh, the fanciest setup we're going to be able to fit onto the amount of prog men that we have. And keep all this in mind if you're trying to fit other features on there like trinamic drivers or servos or debugging or whatever that you're probably going to have to lance more of these features. So there you go. Hope that was helpful. See you in the next video.